Kershysky. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Anna and I'm from the UK. Don't feel obliged to say anything at that point. <laughs> um, I'm a material scientist. Yeah, uh, I'm also an open water swimmer. So tonight I thought I'd, um, I'd give you a little sort of insight into like where that Venn diagram meets in the middle, which is like the history and material science of swimming costumes. <laughs> um, in a treatise which I have entitled on the origin of speedos. And then the byline to that is by means of natural selection. <laughs> okay, so um, in the Western world, um, what women have been wearing to swim has changed massively throughout history, okay? And this has been brought on by like really good innovations in materials engineering, but then also like pulled back two steps every time by the patriarchy. So, so this, is, this is the tale of those, of those two things. So, so in, in prehistory, right, everybody just swam naked, okay? Like they skinny dipped, they chunky dunked, and everything was fine. Like everyone was having a nice time. And then the Romans came along and they loved like swimming and public bathing and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and so actually, uh, we know that they started to wear swimming costumes. And they wore costumes that very much resembled the modern day bikini. And we know this because people have made mosaics of women wearing bikinis, right? And what we don't necessarily see on Wikipedia is that you see women um, wearing bikinis and then just next to them, in like really big black letters, it says corpus listus paratus est. That's a joke for the Latin speakers in the room. Uh, it means, are you beach body ready? <laughs> <laughs> but, but so people looked at these Roman bikinis, right? And they were like, what this could really do with is some more tassels of oppression. So <laughs> it's actually quite difficult to find out what was worn after the Roman period. So after the fall of the Roman Empire, things like swimming and hygiene and writing down shit that women did really went out of fashion. Um, so fast forward now to the 1600s. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and swimming became more, more acceptable again. And now, women had to wear like huge, uh, like, like, like voluminous um, uh, like, like dresses, basically, uh, made out of linen uh, in order to swim. And they had massive sleeves, um, and they also wore a hat in which they could put their handkerchief to dab their faces <laughs> from sweat. Um, this, this had the obvious disadvantage of not really being able to swim very well, uh, but it did have the advantages of not going see-through, um, of not being able to see any shape whatsoever underneath. And also, if you wanted to disguise yourself as a passing sailing ship you could do so <laughs> and it was fine um, <laughs> following on from that in the following century in the 1700s or as I sometimes like to call it in the five o'clocks um, <laughs> Uh, it, it, they, they, they developed this, this voluminous look, right? So, so they, get, they made costumes out of like wool and, and um, like flannel materials. And it was basically like a, a big long dress. It went right up to the neck, all the way down to the wrists. Um, really long dress. And underneath that dress were some trousers, because you can never be too careful about ankles. <laughs> um, and, uh, and this is what they're expected to swim in. And it's no wonder that women didn't want to go swimming in the 1700s, right? Like, they couldn't have made it less appealing if they had, like, strapped actual weights around these women. Which is exactly what they did in the following century. <laughs> so in the 1800s, right, people were starting to realise that actually, like, cold water swimming, and in particular sea swimming, was actually really good for your health. So, um... People were like flocking to the beaches. Um, in, in the UK, they had gender segregated beaches just in case like a nip slip brought down the monarchy. Um, and so everybody was separated apart. And, and the Victorians invented this thing called, um, called a bathing machine, right? And this is basically a shed on wheels. And you get, you get in at the top of the beach and you change into your swimming gear and then someone trundles you down to the sea. Um, you open the back door of the shed, this is true. Open the back door of the shed, go down the steps and there is the sea and then you bathe in it and no one can see what you're doing. Um, and what they were wearing at this point was like, again, like big long dresses with actual lead weights sewn into the hems of their swimming costumes, right? Um, and like, when I was researching this, it was like, um, oh, this was to make sure that they didn't float to the top. And I was like, do you mean the dresses or the corpses of the women <laughs> who have drowned <laughs> from having actual lead weights in their swimming costumes? Um, 
So, so basically, these kinds of swimming costumes were, were the same for, 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 for centuries. Um, and all of that changed with a woman called Annette Kellerman. Right? She was this Australian woman, and she brought along a swimming costume that was made of silk, like, or silk or kind of like cotton materials. Um, and it looked quite similar to actually some swimming costumes that we have today. So it was kind of like a shorty, it was tight to the body, and it only had like strap, uh, strap straps, um, and like it sort of went down at the neck. And um, she actually got arrested in the US for indecent exposure. <laughs> for having this swimming costume, but she persisted and uh, it actually caught on. And so now like women were wearing these kind of costumes like both on the beaches and then also in competitive swimming. So uh, 1912 was the first year that women actually competed in the Olympics in swimming. Um, and they, most of them wore a, a variation of Kellerman's swimming costume. Now, today we would recognize this swimming costume as the type of design that I like to call the fuck off, I'm just here to swim costume. <laughs> Um, you know, the short ones with the like, sensible straps. <laughs> um, but so when you look at the pictures of these, these first Olympian women, um, it's quite unfortunate because mostly they've just got out of the swimming pool to have their photos taken. And these Olympics you can kind of think of as like the origin of the wet T-shirt party because they were wearing like, <laughs> like silken costumes that had gone very much translucent um, and they were quite baggy as well right so it wasn't a good look for anyone <laughs> concerned um, but quite soon after this in sort of the ten, uh, the 1910s and the 20s um, we started to, to develop materials like uh, nylon and nylon was much more stretchy and could kind of make costumes that were a lot a lot less baggy um, speedo developed their racerback costume the one that kind of went in and exposed the shoulder blades <gasps> <gasps> <sighs> Um, in 1928, um, and that was worn by both women and men. And then we got to the 40s, which is super interesting. So in the 40s, uh, it was the war, um, and materials were um, in high demand. So um, all the sorts of materials that were going into swimwear were suddenly needed for the war effort. And so the US government did a thing, I don't know if it was a law or whatever, but like said, um, you have to start using 10% less material in women's swimming costumes in order to fund the war effort with materials, right? <laughs> and this brought about the two-piece swimming costume, right? We got back the bikini, which the Romans had given us so long ago. Um, now, I want you to collectively dry heave with me when I say the next fact, which is that the bikini is named after a place in the Pacific Ocean um, called Bikini Atoll. And it was so named because the guy who invented it envisaged that it would have such an explosive effect on the viewer. That's disgusting, what? Anyway, good dry heaps. Um, so, so that was the 40s. And then in the 50s and 60s, finally we got sensible materials for swimming, right? Because suddenly now like synthetic polymers like polyester, um, uh, 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 what else, polyester, polyurethane, like all, uh, elastane, all these like stretchy materials could finally mean that we didn't have to um, like have baggy clothing or drown um, <laughs> thanks to our swimming materials. Um, so that then brings us to the year 2000 and the Olympics. Now this is an Olympics renowned to materials engineers interested in <laughs> swimming costume materials because it was, the, it was the speedo fast skin, right, that smashed 83% of world records because of this swimming material. Um, and it was, it was inspired by shark skin. So um, they basically had used an electron microscope and zoomed in at shark skin. And if you do that, you see all these little like scales on the surface of a shark. And as water passes over these scales, it creates turbulent flow behind it. Um, and this massively reduces drag for the sharks and also for the swimmers as well. Um, so it was actually banned shortly after these Olympics to have such amazing materials because they basically said that these materials were too performance enhancing. So what I'm taking away from this is that material science is better than drugs. <laughs> um, so that brings me to the present day. Now, the reason I'm telling you all of this is because, as I said, I love swimming. And earlier this summer, I swam the English Channel from England to France. Thank you very much. Um, and I did it wearing a swimming costume. <laughs> and um, it was a swimming costume made of polyester. And um, 
we still have a little way to go with swimming materials, okay? So I, um, I've spent four years trying to find the perfect swimming costume to wear. But even so, beforehand, I had to, like, Vaseline up my nipples a lot and, like, all of the straps and stuff. Because if you imagine, like... You know when you see men and they're running a marathon and they have blood all the way down their shirts because of chafing? Yeah, that, but 15 hours in salt water. <laughs> so we've still got a way to go with materials. <laughs> but that's what my job is as a material scientist to try and improve them. Right, so I've only got five seconds left. So all I want to say is that, you know, we as, as, as people have gone through a lot in history, haven't we? <laughs> uh, in particular, you know, with swimming. And I guess what we fought for, really, is to have costumes that are comfortable for us, right? So that could be a bikini, a burkini, a wetsuit, a, like, shark suit, a normal swimming costume, a fuck off, I'm just here to swim costume. Whatever it is, get swimming in whatever you're comfortable in, because we have fought for it. Thank you very much.